Hi, my name is Amy and thank you very much for watching. So uh, we are on whatever day it is, 11, 12, something like that. We are about four hours and 11 minutes into this 32 hour uh, learn blockchain with Solidity and full stack um, Web3 stuff uh, by Patrick Collins and hosted by Free Foot Code Camp. Uh, it took almost 32 hours to explain the title of that video, but um, last time we were doing some chain link stuff with Oracle things so that we could get the price of Ethereum, which I think we started out with versioning, just as like an example of what this is. So I think we're going to actually, um, if we get that far, do some get the actual price of ethereum to us dollars in this time um the only reason we're doing this now instead of me eating dinner is because my cat is sleeping on my lap so there's that it's github so now we know that if we import at chainlink slash contracts src v0.8 interfaces aggregator v3 interface dot soul. This is the same as if we had just stuck this whole contract right at the top of. We definitely don't want to do that. We we don't want to stick the entire contract into the thing because when this gets updated, it will get updated. Our fund me contract, which makes our code look a lot nicer. And now we have this aggregator v3 interface that we can work with. Okay, great. So now that we have a minimalistic interface, which will give us the ABI, how do we actually go ahead and get the price here? Well, documentation has a good example if you want to play with it and try to reverse engineer it as well. Here's how we're going to do it. In our code, we're going to create an aggregator v3 interface object called price feed, an aggregator v3 variable called price feed, which is going to equal to aggregator v3 interface. Okay, uh, a few things are happening. Um, my laptop is really far away from me. I would like to switch my keyboard for my laptop. So we are doing the aggregator interface, price feed aggregator interface. So this is a familiar pattern by now. We have the get blockchain price. So we'll just comment out this. Um, okay, so this is just getting the version. This blockchain price um, price feed equals and probably the ETH address to use. Contract at address, this address. Exactly the same as what we're doing down here. We're assuming a contract at this address is gonna have all the functionality of this aggregator V3 interface, which again, means it has this decimals function, this description function, version, get round data, and the important one, latest round data, which has the latest price at this answer piece. What we can do now is we can call that latest round data function on the price feed. So we'll say price feed dot late. Okay. Where's, uh, I don't have it open anymore. So we'll just let them finish typing and then we'll follow just along. Just round. Date. Okay, so. There's a lot of, I don't know why it, this is getting to be too big of a file for me. <laughs> okay, so. Price feed dot latest round data. 
just in case that is a noise that you can hear my cat woke up and just threw up but she is totally fine it is something that she does she's been doing it for all 13 years of her life i have taken her to the vet multiple times uh she just nothing uh she's fine data now if we look at the inner shouldn't it just be dot answer then it should it should just be dot answer that is my answer dot answer const latest price oh we can't do const um you went 256 You know, just for funsies. Okay. Is... It is definitely not that. Interface. We see that this latest round data actually doesn't return one variable, it returns a whole bunch of different variables. And that's what we're gonna return in our contract. So All right, well, what if uh, we just... So we'll take this off. I, mean, I think this is a struct. Maybe? Are we not allowed to have structs? Um, memory's not a thing? What was the... Web 3 course code lesson 2 um, Maybe it's a mapping. Who knows? Let's just go on with the... So we're going to put these parentheses and we're going to say you went 80 round ID. Okay. I think this is um, like deconstructing is what it's called. If I am reading this correctly and it might not be. Um, so basically, we have the parentheses. We're defining what it is. You went 80. You went 256, answer. We can even look right at the documentation to see what else it returns. Int price, you int. Price. You went started at Okay. Docs at chain link. And then it is Docs. Get the latest price. We will look at. So it is. 
had ID, not like I capital D. Okay. So this has started at You went and then that. I'm not sure why we need all of that, though. But, uh, we'll go on. You went? Timestamp. Yeah, see, he didn't do ID, he did with a capital D. He did round ID with a lowercase d. This still does not like me at all. Are these just orange with unused local variables? Okay. Does he get this, or did he just And then you save? went to 80, answered in round. Oh, now there's a lot of code here. Since this function returns so many different variables, we have to set something up to capture them. However, all we care about is price. We don't care about round ID, started at, timestamp, or answered in round. So what we can do is just remove them and just... Literally, that's fine, I guess. I guess. Um... So this is called deconstructing the variable and Okay. Just leave the commas. Oh, leave the commas. Gotcha. Uh jut Okay. So you have to leave the commas for this because unlike real, well, this isn't really a proper, like, object, I guess. So it needs to know how many commas to, and it'll just say unused local variable price. Okay. Weird. But... Now we have int price equals price feed that latest round data. The reason that price is an int 256 and not a uint 256 is because some prices or some data feeds could be negative here. So that it's a. So a regular int 256 still does not like it being, you know, unused. Int 256 so it can stay flexible. Now that we have the price, this is going to be price of ETH in terms of USD. And we saw an example. Okay. So this here. In terms of USD. Really? So do you see what I did there? Um, basically, I returned price, so it'll stop telling me to this is an unused variable, and then I added a returns to int 256 up here because that's what we are returning. I don't know. Let's see what he wants us to do. Well, of this before, it was around 3,000, and it returned this number because Solidity doesn't work with decimals for a number of reasons, but we just need to know that there are eight decimal places uh, associated with this price feed. If you want to double check how many decimals there are, this contract has a decimals function that you can call as well. 
that will tell you exactly how many decimals are in this price feed. Now, as we know, message.value is gonna have 18 decimal places. Why does it have 18 decimal places? Well, because one ether is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, is this massive number in way which has 18 zeros, which is equivalent to one point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we want these to have the same decimal places, right? Because right now this has eight, this has 18. They're different units right now. So to get them to match up, all we need to do is return price times one E10 or one raised to the 10. Okay, so since that has eight decimals, it's simple multiplication. Um, this is not the correct thing. So price times one ETH 10. I don't think that's how he did it. E10, not ETH, like to the power of 10. 10th, which is equal to one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Message.value though is gonna be a uint 256. And right now, price is an int 256. So why do we convert this value from an int 256 to a uint 256. Well, we can do what's called typecasting. All we need to do is add uint 256 and wrap this whole thing up between these two parentheses. Okay, so um, I think with JavaScript we have like uh, cancel. Uh, by the way, I was in a nice Twitter space yesterday, and they talked about revoke .cache. And basically what that does is um, it goes through your wallet and revokes access um, to wallet, like not to wallets, but to apps that you've granted access to before. So um, if you have a wallet that's not like your burner wallet that has something nice in it, you should every once in a while pay the money to revoke that cash to just like make sure you're clean. It's almost to the point where you should just create a new burner wallet for every NFT that you buy um, or just like certain types and then just automatically transfer them all to cold wallets um, and then never connect your cold wallet, cold wallet to literally anything. Just like a one-way transfer, and that's it. Um, I don't, I bought my first NFTs before this because I didn't want like my first introduction to all of this to be like a scam or me like throwing money into the ETH abyss like I've heard happens. So uh, yeah, um, this, Oh, that's because I saw this and it's asking me if I want to save and uh, we don't we don't need revoke that cash right now. I'm going to write that down though. And then never see it again. So don't save. We don't care about that. We are just trying to get back to the remix over here. So, uh, typecasting. This is interesting. U int 256 in parentheses, enclosing the price to the power of the E. What don't you like? Is not implicitly convertible. You can't typecast anything, but there are some values like in 256 and you in 256 that can be easily. 
so this is int 256 price and this is uint 256 and yet I am the one with the error um, is this a versioning thing? Um, you int uh, 56 to you int 56 not implicitly convertible. Um, uh, should it so price equals and then I want to convert the price. So why is this, well then, I'm just wondering, because what Patrick did is not different than what I did. Um, it would be one thing if what he did was um, like, this, so int 256, what if we just did int, Oh, you know what? This is silly. Let's put that back. Um, we'll put this here. And that thing here just needs a U in front of it. And then we'll be good. It's like converted between the two. Now, of course, since we're not modifying any state with this get price function, we can make this a view. I think Remix already told me to do that. We need to not have that on the screen. Remix. Yep. View. Is it a public view or is it view public? Does it matter? Public view is more human readable, right? Public view. And say it returns a uint 256. And if we save and compile, we go ahead and we get that check mark. Now, okay, so we went ahead and we got that check mark. That could be a little bit tricky the first couple of times you do it in Solidity, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And in the future, we can always reference a function like this to figure out, okay, here's the easiest way for me to get this number. Awesome. So now we have a get price function, which is going to return a uint 256 which is going to be the price of Ethereum in terms of USD. All we need to do is convert the message.value from Ethereum to terms of dollars. Let's create this get conversion rate function. For this one, we're going to take an input parameter of UN256 of ETH amount. It's going to be a public. Okay. So did we already define this? Yes, but I think I did that on my own. So you went 
256 F amount view function and it's going to return and it's returning things probably you went to you went 256. We're going to pass it some ETH amount. And on the other side, we're going to get how much that ETH is worth in terms of USD. So we're going to do a UN 256 ETH price. Okay. So we will just get this stuff. So UN 256. ETH price equals equals get price. So first, we're okay. So get price. <sighs> Why do I keep doing this? Okay. Get blockchain price. So this should just get the thing that we just converted. We're going to call our get price function that we just created to get the price of Ethereum. Then we're going to do UN256 ETH amount in USD. Okay. UN256 ETH amount in USD equals message dot value divided by f price i don't know if this is right better not but hey semicolon semicolon uh-oh everything is bad um we will take out the returns no uh Return. That is not what I meant to. All right, so I did this bad equals ETH price times ETH amount Everybody, this is Gregory from Dapp University. What is this? Hey, and welcome to the. No. Hello, I'm Craig, and I'm a. No, what's going on? This is the beginner Jesus. JavaScript course. Jesus, the fuck. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Uh, that was intense. I, uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, we're gonna get back to the regular course after um I eat dinner. And this is not okay. I will look back and make sure that I'm in the correct time and everything. But yeah, that was that was not okay. I accidentally guess I clicked on the next video icon instead of the play button. And that was alarming. So, uh, no, that is not okay. And it is uh, absolutely time for me to go and eat dinner. I, this is a sign from above. So... Um, I will, I will talk to you later. Bye.
Hi, so welcome back, and let me explain a little bit about what happened right before my, uh, dinner. I thought that I had clicked on the video just making it go way before, like at the very, like, uh, hour zero, and I was just like, no, I don't, I don't want to figure out where we are in this. We're in a good position. I don't want to, you know figure it out again and then I kept hitting pause and I kept like going to new videos and I was like why is pause not working and then it just turns out that my browser was off to the side so I was clicking uh the forbidden button so yeah don't do that you're gonna be fine but we did leave off around here so um I'm just gonna I think I already did um but let us Equal. go back a couple That's of seconds. Return. We'll be good. So function, and we are getting the conversion rate. This does not like this because I need to do a semicolon. And then this should be good. What was I having an issue with before? Oh, uh, it was this thing here where I had the this as an int instead of you a you int, so that did not work out in my favor. Just saying. So, let us continue. Uh, we have about half of an hour, and I just did paid m the advertisement tax. So uh, here we go. You went two fifty six. We're gonna pass it some ETH amount, and on the other side, we're gonna get how much that ETH is worth in terms of USD. So we're gonna do a U and two fifty six ETH price equals get price. So first, we're gonna call our get price function that we just created to get the price of Ethereum. <laughs> And I did get blockchain price because I like descriptive methods and also to be confused when following along with a tutorial. Then we're going to do UN256 ETH amount in USD equals ETH price times ETH amount. And then we're going to divide it by 1 E18. Okay. Divided by one e eighteen. So this has eight decimals. So we multiplied it by ten more so that it is by eighteen. Um so like if you want to increase it by one percent, you have to do like um 101 divided by 100 and that is 1% so I think that's what we're doing here is basically taking the we're just seeing I'm assuming the math is correct when you're doing multiplication and division math in solidity you always want to multiply and add first and then go ahead and divide. Since ETH price and ETH amount both have 18 additional decimal places, if we were to just let them rock without this, they would have an additional 36 zeros tacked onto the end. So we need oh. to divide by 1E18. Now, when we get to the hard hat sections of this course, testing all this math is gonna be a lot easier. And if you're really struggling with some of the math bits right now, I wouldn't let that slow you down because once we get to hard hat, it's gonna become a lot easier to actually test this than working on a test net. And this ETH amount in terms of USD is the number that we're looking for. So we can just go ahead and return ETH amount in USD. This okay. These be returns here. And boom. Now we have a get conversion rate function. I'll walk you through the math real quick. Let's say the ETH price is going to be $3,000. So it's going to be $3,000, but it's going to have an additional 18 zeros tacked on the end. It matches the message.value way.
I'm just, yeah, so if one, shouldn't it be 17? Unless it's just 18 is where the dot is. So anything above, so it would be, for one, it would be like 18 zeros and a one. So yeah, th uh, 3,000 is there. Eight units. And let's say, for example, we send one ETH or one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ETH into this contract. One ETH should equal $3,000. So to get the price, we're going to now do the ETH price, which is 3,000 times the ETH amount, which is this one, and then divide by one raised to the 18th. So math it out, we'll do three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times three thousand, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we divide that by one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which equals two point nine 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 E twenty one, which the calculator kind of messed up the math a little bit, but 2.99 E21 means this has 21 decimal places. So it'd be 2.12345678910, or 12345678910, one, or 12345678910, 2999.9999999. 2999.9999. And this is actually exactly the reason why we don't do decimal math in Solidity. Our calculator saw that massive number, was having a hard time getting it, so it ended up rounding that number to 2.999999. When we work exclusively with whole numbers in Solidity, we don't have a chance of losing that precision. And in Solidity, this is going to return exactly $3,000. Wait. How will take your point or like point zero 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 one be like office space? where we get it wrong and then all of a sudden we have millions of dollars. Do it wrong and then get millions of dollars. So, yeah. Um, probably shouldn't joke about that. Office Space was an amazing movie, though. Um, but yeah, apparently the calculator is bad. Do you want to try it with my calculator? Does it work? I mean, does it do the same thing? Should we try to figure out how to make this bigger? I don't know how to make it bigger. So three, one, two, three, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay. Divide by one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Close enough for us to assume that my math was wrong but also um yeah it does round so that sucks this is why we do way and uh keep everything huge bitch is correct one ethereum at three thousand dollars per ethereum is going to be three thousand dollars and like i said since we're building this contract assuming we're going to be working on this test net we're not going to test this function on the testnet because we're going to have to wait for that transaction to go through. If you want to go ahead and deploy this and play around with it yourself, you're more than welcome to. Okay, great. Now we have a function called get conversion rate that we can use on our fund. I trust you. Function to make sure we've sent enough message.value in our fund. So what we can do now is all we need to do is do get conversion rate of message.value needs to be greater than the minimum USD. Of course, right now our minimum USD is just in terms of 50, 
and we know that a conversion rate is going to return it with 18 zeros to represent the decimal places, our minimum USD amount needs to be upgraded to 10 to 50 times 1E18. Or again, 1 times 10 raised to the 18th. I'm going to deploy this to a testnet just to demo. Shouldn't it not be... the amount in US? Conversion rate? Because when you do that, that is not, that's not correct. First of all, not correct. Second of all, how can I find anything? So we have the version, we have the conversion rate. Okay, so we have the minimum USD um, is here, I did 5 and he did 50, times 1 E18, demonstrate it, but again, you don't have to if you don't want to wait for this. So we go to the deploy, we're injecting the Web3, we have this account, we go choose fund me, we're deploying it, confirming it. And it is deployed. So I will not immediately just exit out because uh, that's silly. But if I give it a value, if I give it no value, I do fund. A minimum of this is required. So, um, we can do 50 ether. Okay, so it looks like I need to go to um, rink the test net. Let's go find the show more. It's GitHub. The rink the faucet. This is the backup. I am not a robot. It is also my MetaMask. FA. Um. I should probably put in a different issue. Have they addressed my issue yet? Sweet. 
What did they say? He's gonna be like, he's such a pain in the butt, Amy. Sorry. Um, just gonna say that. I'm going to say this is a repo enhancement, I guess. Um, um, for your information, I just went to get more uh, ink B test coin. I don't know what we're actually calling that. And um, with this URL, um, And it has this warning message. So we should probably link to we test that. Someone's going to be happy at me for a hackathon, Hacktoberfest. Um, this is basically like you should um, come with solutions, not problems. So we got the rink B stuff. I'm gonna go back to Remix and oh, I think the issue here is not that. The issue here is that I don't have 5th. Um, you know what? I have 0.2941th. So, um, well, you were not kidding. So it's not, that's not the correct message anymore. It is... By one e to the 18th.
Okay, so I just don't have enough because this is too high of a number. It should be the get conversion rate. This should be above the fund function. And it should be should be get conversion rate of the value I don't know what to tell you, Amy. ETH converter. We'll try five way because that's easier to see. <sighs> we'll try this and we'll try and it will probably fail. said okay well we'll go on with this because we followed his code and Hopefully. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy this. Confirm. And now we have this fund me contract. If I don't say anything in value and hit the fund button, we're going to get this gas estimation error failed. This is kind of a blanket error, basically saying, hey, you can go ahead and send this transaction if you want. It's highly likely that it's not going to work. And the reason that Remix knows that it's probably not going to work is because it can see this require and simulate the transaction and say, hey, you didn't send enough money with this. However, even if we send some money, like 5,000 way, it'll still give us this error because that's not enough. Let's do the calculation right now based on what the price of ETH is. So we can actually go to data.chain.link. We look and see approximately what the price is. So it looks like the price of Ethereum right now is about $3,000. And this might be different for you depending on when you do that. So if the price of Ethereum is $3,000 and our minimum is at least 50, we could do 50 divided by 3,000 0.016 ETH should be approximately enough. So if we go to our Ethereum converter and we do 0.016, we'll get how much that is in way. Let's do 0.02 just to make sure that we're going to be over. Okay, we'll just do, so I wasn't that far off. Zero dot zero two. Do this, come back here. 
Um, I just don't think the minimum way because it doesn't matter when you over the amount so we'll paste that in we'll change this to way and now if I hit the fun button instead of us getting that error popping up it's gonna actually go ahead and let it I mean is it though do the fun function and we could confirm it and it wouldn't fail i'm going to reject it for now just because i don't really feel like waiting for okay so yeah that's literally exactly what i have it is So 50 times 1 e to the 18th, and then this part here where it does the message dot value, oh, there we go, see, how did I miss that? That makes a lot of sense. Also, I thought that's what I did. I was like, well, this doesn't make sense. We need to have that. Uh, we'll deploy that again. Oh, I probably should have not deployed that with anything in it. Okay, so we are going to deploy that with the zero thing. It's going to take a moment, but um, this one is probably the correct one, and we have this here. We're going to do the this. Please let me, yeah. And not deploy, but we'll fund. So, the theory, um, I need to purchase more Ethereum, just as an aside. Confirm. And hey look, we've funded it. So. Yay, go us. We just basically redid the whole thing. Um, anyway, that is, that is one hour of me for today. So, 
I'm glad that we got the conversion working. I'm sure that in about two seconds, Patrick is about to give us an overview of what happened. So I am very happy with ending this here tonight. That way we can get some more in-depth explanation tomorrow. Uh, we are at 420. We'll, we'll call it because I, it's funny, but it's 421.51. So, um, I'll see you next time. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.